just bring him in, and then we can just we can set it all up. I think. Okay. All Does right. Sound like a plan. Sounds like a plan, dude. He's gonna be here. Uh, we're gonna have a guest in a few minutes, and uh, he's uh, here. Yeah. I just I just tagged him in, so I uh, give him a second to log in, and then we'll uh we'll explain who the guest is and uh, what exactly we're doing here. Fantastic. I sip on my coffee. There he is. Hey, welcome to the program, my friend. Thank you for showing up a little early. Oh, we like that. Hydro, is that you? Looks like he's walking around his house. This is kind of fun. Oh, uh, he's connecting to audio <laughs> now. Now Hydro can probably hear us, yeah? No, this is the rap poet. I think Hydro will be joining us as well. That's my bro. All right. Okay. On. Oh, we're getting two of you for the price of none today. Yes. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> so what what was your name man i want to make sure we're calling everyone correct names here kain the rat poet r-a-p-o-e-t the rat right. poet okay self suffice on all streaming platforms currently serving as the troubadour of connecticut's capital city hartford nice is that where you're at right now you're in hartford yes sir okay so nice. so here's the deal and, and we've got hydro joining us shortly are you guys gonna be like in the same room there no is he coming I on i don't know where i don't know where he is oh okay <laughs> well at least we've got you then right yeah but i just <laughs> i just texted him to ask if he'd be joining and he said he was in a couple of minutes all right cool well here's the setup and if uh if hydro tags in then that's great we'll get you guys both on but otherwise uh we were looking to talk to a hip-hop expert today and I'll explain why, but do you feel you're qualified as a hip hop expert, rap poet? Yeah, I'm pretty qualified. I'm not a pioneer. I wasn't there in 1973 when it was founded, but I've been diligently doing my research to catch up. Nice. Right on. And are you a performer yourself? Yes, I am. Yeah. So I'm he's a rap poet, tonight. dude. Right, right. I don't want to assume just based on your name. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> right on so uh what, what style where were you performing at all that kind of stuff i i perform rap uh and spoken word um hip-hop lyricism you know there's the four foundational elements of hip-hop are djing breaking writing which many people call graffiti and emceeing which is not just rapping but that might depending on how much time we have to talk about that you you'll find out the emceeing is not is what people mistake for rapping. Just like people mistake uh, hip hop as a whole culture, they mistake it for just dance or rap. Uh, I got you. And There's what a is... lot of complexities to it for sure. And you mentioned spoken word in there. I gotta mm -hmm. tell you, man, as uh, as I'm scrolling through TikTok, I've been starting to get a lot of spoken word on my uh, my for you page. Okay. I'm so freaking into it, dude. I think it is so powerful and and. There's so much room for emotion to be brought up in spoken word that it is so cool to watch. And I mean, most of the time, like there's a lot of emotion behind it that get that hits me hard, dude. I really enjoy it. You do that live. Yeah. Yeah. We do that live. I'll shout out to Saul Williams. If you're going down that path, definitely check him. He's one of the great people to blow it up to the world. There's a movie called slam. It was like the first feature film featuring a spoken word artist. And then it looked like Brewski, Brewski familiar with it. And then there's yeah. a film called Slam Nation, which documented the Slam team with Jessica Care Moore and others who first published spoken word poetry and um and just took it. And now Jessica Care Moore, you might see her in common, is a is a popular Grammy winning artist. Mm -hmm. She's in a lot of his videos and songs and on the albums of a lot of rappers for the reason that. Um, you just said, Nikki, that it opens up, uh, you know, a uh, Nas album, a Jeezy album, uh, all these different rappers use this spoken word to open up their album because it just grips you before you get caught up in the beat. Nice. It does. It is so incredible how like it is just, I mean, a silent room and that just kicks off. It's just really powerful. Uh, quite an art that I'm really new to, but enjoying what I'm seeing. So I'll definitely check out Slam for sure. That sounds cool. Hey, let me ask you this. Is there a difference between rap and hip hop? I mean, a technical distinction, or is it all the same umbrella? Oh, Hydro. Oh, goes hydro. oh hey, we got we got Hydro joining in, too. Hey, Hydro. Say hi to everyone. 
Peace and love, man. Peace and love. Thank you for having us here. Absolutely. So Hydro is our, uh, our, our I suppose, our designated hip hop expert, but then he brought the rap poet in as well. Oh, so. yes. That's my, that's, the, that's my big brother right there. I call him uh, Professor X. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> he is definitely, I'm, I'm more Magneto than, than Professor X. Nice. <laughs> you know, we, we, we balance each other out very well. But, um, but you're, you're definitely qualified to talk about the difference between rap and, and hip hop. Yes. Yeah, what's the answer yeah. to that? Rapping, rapping is the expression. It is the art form of rhyming words, of emceeing. It is one of the elements, core four elements of hip hop. That is breaking, emceeing, graffiti, writing, which is actually what it's called, writing, DJing. And then the fifth one is uh, beatboxing. But the four core elements of hip hop are breaking, which most people would, um, you know, would see. Beatboying. Uh, would, yeah, b-boying, that's like a synonymous word. The b-boys and the b-girls, they don't like to be called b-boys and b-girls. They, they prefer breaking, but that's what, you know, that's what they've actually been called. Um, I'm 51 years old, so I, I go way back. And that, that, that's what we always knew it as. So. Exactly. Yep, yep. So MCing is, you know, is the, is the MC. You know, he it started off with the DJ at first. It wasn't somebody up there actually rapping and rhyming. It was actually the DJ just getting a party started. So, you know. Just to give you a quick history, yeah. you know, as I've studied it from uh, KRS-One, um, who is one of the legendary MCs and educators in this space. Um, also, uh, Russell Simmons, who went on later on to found um, from Rush Promotions to um, Def Jam, working with Rick Rubin, Lear Cohen. Um, so this is a lot of this knowledge I've gotten from hearing them retell it because they were there. So it's very important to get it from the source. I'm not the source, but very much so feel like it is my duty as a practitioner. Uh, and see well, Hydro, can I can I comment on something? Like we we had a we're doing a series called Domingo right now in Hartford, where they're shutting down entire streets just to celebrate arts in the community uh, throughout Connecticut and in Hartford, which is the capital. And uh, Hydro was the host for one section. So imagine you have a major city street and it's just shut down for blocks and blocks, like say 20 blocks, with just breaks in between so people can still drive through, like maybe every five blocks is a break. And Hydro had this one section um, and he he was hosting MCs, dancers, uh, different genres, a, a Hartford Proud drum, drum team, youth dancing and drumming. And so one of the things that like I wanna make clear is we weren't there in 1973 when hip hop started and was founded and all these elements were codified in the principles, which are peace, love, unity, and safely having fun, which spells the acronym PLUS. But we definitely live out those and have studied. And when we start getting props for winning battles and as rappers and then realizing like, what's the difference between an MC and a rapper? We took it seriously. And Hydro, I saw you yesterday. MC stands for move the crowd. MC stands for microphone controller. And MC stands for master of ceremony. So when you're a master of ceremony, you don't encourage uh, the youth in the area to get hurt. You don't encourage people to, um, you know, we, we do a little competitive snapping and dancing and MC and everything. But as an MC, you make sure that it's within a realm. Like you don't match up people who aren't evenly matched and willing to go head to head in that contest, stuff like that. So all of this goes into emceeing not to belabor the point but i saw you my brother hydro doing this yesterday you know giving all these different voices from youth to old latino black white asian different races giving them a platform different perspectives that's 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 what you start to delve into when you talk about what is a master of ceremony it's someone who's responsible for creating peace love unity and safely having fun through rapping and through call and response not lyrical, miracle, empirical in the swimming pool. It's like, we could do that and people would be like, wow, he's great with his lyrics. But will people feel like they had a voice? Did they get to shout at some point? Did they feel like someone looked at that at some point? These are the type of things that you start to get into when you talk about what is an MC. It's yeah. not that an MC isn't a rapper. It's that a rapper isn't necessarily an MC. I got you. Let me ask you a question that's been bugging me for years because I play MC at a lot of radio events where I host the thing, right? No freestyle going on, but I've always, I hate it when people spell MC, E-M-C-E-E. -E -E. 
or uh-huh. EMCE or whatever. Like it's MC. It's a master of ceremonies. Am I right or am I wrong? <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> hey, I love, I, it. I, I, I love that. And honestly, I'm okay with both because the other one seems to be like the phonetic spelling, you know, how it's how it's actually set out. So I've written it both ways, you know, okay. but I definitely <laughs> love to point out to people that MC is and then these things that make right. it, it stands yeah, for yeah. something. It doesn't seem like we should make it into another word. So when it when you get into what is a rap uh, what is uh rapping and hip hop, um, so rapping is is the expression, but hip hop is so much more. You had yeah. the 1970s where these youth in New York City felt like they were being ignored, their self-expression was being ignored. Um, they weren't having uh, platforms or spaces that they were able to be in and safely express themselves, you know? So you had, I got uh, you. how did hip hop happen? You know, as it comes from little KRS-One at the time, watching 1973 in New York, Sedgwick, uh, Sedgwick Avenue in the Bronx. Watching Cool Herc. Yeah, Cool Herc's, Cool Herc's little sister. Uh, at the time, he went by the name of Cool Ass Clyde because he was a, a, a writing artist. He was graffiti tagging and things of that nature. His sister asked him to DJ her party and he ended up doing it. And it was at a, a local um, community center right there. And uh, the little kids weren't able to get in. It was more for the older kids and whatnot, but he changed his name from Cool Ass Clyde to Cool DJ Herc and started this thing of the jam. And at first that's what it was, was the jam. And the jam became so big that it spilled outside. Mm -hmm. So then hip hop started out in the park is really truthful because it ended up becoming something that spilled out of a community center right onto the blocks of New York, mm-hmm. right yes. into the parks of New York. They would plug up to the telephone poles and things of that nature. And yeah, yeah. it wasn't really called hip hop until after Africa Bambata, who was at the time a gang leader, reformed gang leader, won a the black spades. Yeah, yeah, run, run, won a writing contest, he was, uh, you know, as an award winner, went to Africa, you know, found himself, came back, and that's where the Africa part of Bambada came from. And and Bambada being a gang, a ga- he was a gangster. So he, was. he he organized the other gangs in New York to say, hey guys, if we keep up the way we're going, you know, these gangs were supposed to be patrolling our neighborhoods, keeping the neighborhoods safe because the police, the FBI, everybody's coming in here, mm-hmm. destroying our neighborhoods. So we're policing ourselves, but now we're no longer policing ourselves. We're the ones actually destroying things as well. Right. We need to stop this. We need to stop this. And through this culture, you know, we're going to build something where we can change ourselves and do something positive and make something for ourselves. And he saw another DJ, local guy, MC, Love Bug, Starsky, who was calling it hip hop in his lyrics, in his calls and responses, in his party sets and things of that nature. So Bambada was like, but we're going to call shout it Shout out to Cowboy, MC. And Cowboy from MC Grandma Cowboy. Splash was the one who yeah. like coined the word. What, did he stop? what was it? What was it? Hey, everybody say, ho, oh, oh, ho, hey. Like, that's how the call and response started. That was, uh, that was cowboy, you know okay. what I'm saying? Right on. Let me, let, let me pause you right there, because you're starting yeah, yeah. to get into the answer to some of my bigger questions here. So, Nick, first of all, I'm feeling good about our two experts here. Would you concur? <laughs> yeah, I would. One thing I want to say is I love watching you guys talk about this. I can see the, the joy uh-huh. and the love of all of this just like seething out of you as i'm watching you guys it's compelling so thank you for being here for sure yeah uh we're talking with rap poet and uh and hydro our hip-hop experts why you ask uh we're we're gonna do a little segment on the show here called questions from crosby my son is crosby he's 12 years old he's turning 13 actually this week and every now and again he's at the stage of life where he's starting to look at the bigger picture and he's coming at me with some profound questions and uh he asked me the other day uh, he basically said, why, why did black people invent rap? Why, why is that their thing? Why are they good at it? How did it come from that community? 
And I had this moment of like, boy, I never thought about that, actually. <laughs> Let me, would you like to hear what my answer was to hear how insanely either maybe close or how far I'm, off I was? I'm ready. I'm on the edge of my seat. Yes. Let's yes. <laughs> hope I don't put my foot in my mouth here. I was, uh, yeah. it's like that Seinfeld episode where they're like, I don't know if we're supposed to be talking about this. Like, you know, I was, I was treading lightly. But... We're supposed to be talking about this. Thank you. That's the whole point of this show here. So That's I appreciate right. you saying that. You have to have conversation. So I told him, as I was kind of pondering this, like off the top of my head, I'm like, well, listen, the one thing all cultures have in common is we all love music, not the same kinds, but every culture loves music. And some cultures seem to sort of, I don't know, channel this energy that comes from their community. And I was saying, like, if you look at like sort of tribal music, it's based around a basic drum beat and not quite singing. It's some form of almost chanting or something. And that's something that a lot of you know, indigenous cultures just on their own, it sort of grew out of that community. And I said, rap seems to me to be a similar thing, where in, you know, in an underdeveloped uh, part of a city where the local kids may not have the money to, you know, or they're not, the parents probably didn't buy them a guitar and a drum kit, or they didn't have good music programs in school that exposed them to instruments, that that particular community developed a form of music that was based basically on beats and not singing per se, but not spoken word either, somewhere in between, some type of urban poetry. And it just sort of grew from that and seemed to become something unique to that community and culture that then obviously expanded, but it started there. So rate my answer. Was that ignorant? Was I right on any part? <laughs> what do you think? I think you definitely touched on different pieces. Um, when we, when, when me and Kaim, rap poet, talk about hip hop as we know it to be, we're starting from around the 70s, right? Yeah. But if we take it back further, you touched on some things. Before there was that, uh, you know, there was those drums, <laughs> there was that chanting as a method of conveying stories and history and also messages, knowledge and information. Also, you know, as we, as we, uh, being hip hop MCs, uh, further our studies on just knowledge. You know, we we find that sound and and song, sing song has existed probably as long as human beings have, and 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 has existed as a way um, to convey messages, not only to come together as a community, but also to keep that tradition going forward. And I think. It has just happened that we in this present day and time um, have and have found this art form as hip hop. But yeah, come from I, I agree. I think form. I think there's it also depends what levels. Like just from the beginning, we talked about what is a rapper? Is a rapper hip hop? A rapper is definitely part of hip hop. But then we said, what is an MC? And you could see it could get quite deep, right? Down at, depending how far you want to go. Now, for me and Hydro, we're MCs. We're dedicated to the culture. When it first started out, a lot of people were DJs and MCs and graph writers. They were doing all these things. Um, and shout out to everybody. Shout out to LL, who just talked about all the contributions of the pioneers. I am overwhelmed just by studying this sliver of the, the lane of MCing alone. So I respect everybody else. We always bring the B-boys and B-girls to our shows and everything like that and work with graffiti artists and so forth. But I know that like it's so overwhelming just to study each part of it. Um, and Brewski and Hydro referenced earlier, you know, when you were asking about MC spelled MC versus MC, right? So technically you could say, look, hip hop has MCs just like anything else has MCs. But once you start going into it, like you said, there's a reason why we say MC. There's a certain responsibility and a code that goes with that. Are you the master of ceremony? Are you somebody that just got a check for it? Or are you somebody who cares about the young people and who's your audience? And you're not performing the same way to a group of people in one neighborhood like you are in the other neighborhood. You're not performing the same way when uh, we just lost somebody's aunt to breast cancer as you are when we're celebrating someone's wedding. An MC is responsible for what they're doing in the ceremony and you're moving the crowd, which means you don't say, oh man, this crowd is like horrible. Like if the crowd ain't responding a certain way as an MC, you're calling response. They giving you energy, you giving it back, right? Sure. But even in the spelling, besides just saying we use the letters MC, um, like Hydro and Brewski were saying, 
MCN is not MCing ING in hip hop culture. We spell it MCIN, breaking, IN, B boying, like Bruski was saying, B boying, B girling. We add an IN, it, depending on how deep you want to go down. Sure. But one thing it's signifying is like this started, like you said, in different tribal, uh, there, there's just these universal collective unconscious urges people have. But particularly in the South Bronx in the 73, what was happening was there was a flood of heroin going in and then being replaced by crack, which was extra cheap, extra easy. Uh, it was very tempting for people whose uh, buildings were being burned down. They built the Cross Bronx Expressway through this neighborhood. It was rubble. It was junkyards. And these kids were basically the way the, the politicians and, and the politicians are on record documenting that they had what was called a policy of benign neglect, which means um, we're going to officially not send cops to help people in this community. We're going to officially not create policies to help them because technically we want uh, there to, we don't really care about these people. They're expendable. So in this particular time, it was like we've seen cultures around the world, but I think the reason why it's going to be 50 years old next year is because it was created in a crucible where these people were expected, our ancestors were expected to kill each other become drug addicts and make money off of incentive, what I call incentivized dysfunction. Meaning this wasn't just an accident. You were getting paid to create drug addicts in your neighborhood and you had not many other ways. The schools were shutting down. They were taking the arts out of the program. I know I'm saying a lot of things, but just follow the gist of this, which is that we add an IN onto MCN, B-boy and B-girl and break in, write in, uh, DJ in because the idea was regardless of what's happening around you and what externally you're being told to do and anything is created you have an in an x and a re meaning just like you breathe there's an internal there's an external and then there's respiration there's a repetition and our founders to their credit in the midst of all this craziness and drugs and violence and being meant to kill each other they realize oh we can there's something within us that will produce something greater than what's outside. And they did that. And we started to see through the following decades, you had people where you was considered a poor neighborhood or a, a, you know whatever lower class society. Now you got people paying more money for rips in their clothes and baggier jeans and jeans hanging down. <laughs> All these things, anything that you consider was terrible from the outside. Hip hop basically became a way of looking at things that said, you add value because your value as a human being, you get in your cipher, which is a circle. You surround yourself with other people who value you and value yourselves. And the world starts to look at you and try to try to add value. So I, I don't want to, I don't well, want to go on. too far. I know I said a lot. No, no, no. I, I like what you're saying. About let me... Spelling, at least spelling and going deep in the culture <laughs> and how it's, it's a different version of what was created. Hip -hop yeah. created no, you're starting to paint thing. a picture. I get it. But let me ask you, or, or, or Hydro, like, yeah. are you saying that hip hop sort of coincidentally or accidentally came from this circumstance of culture is everything you were just describing? Or is there something, you know, uniquely African American that it would have happened regardless of the, uh, uh, the external factors you, you were just uniquely describing? Uniquely Latino and African American. Hydro, do you, do you want to chime in? Yeah, definitely. I want to say that, um, Although a product of the times and definitely greatly influenced by the environment, um, by everything that was happening around them, yes, those, those conditions put certain people in a certain place. So you had mm. gangsters, <laughs> you had nerds, you had regular people. You had also, you had people who bought into the American dream. Um, you had people like uh, uh, DJ, you know, this, this style of DJing and stuff also came from Jamaica and Jamaican parents are very, very strict and, 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 and on their children, Caribbean folks, you know, um, you know, most parents period, they want their kids to become something and do something. And a lot of the youth in New York were seeing that they had knowledge to do something, you know, uh, you had uh, Grandmaster Flash was an electrician who could not get a job. 
Hmm. So he said, I'm going to DJ to make money. He created the first mixer. Yep. Certified yep. electricity. There would be, the way you think about DJing today would not exist. Would not exist. You know, before guys were mixing records manually with amps and all kind of stuff. And he took, I just took some notes here before I came in, but you know, he, he did something profound. There were people that were very intelligent and could do something, but they weren't being given that opportunity because of the racism and prejudice that existed at the time. So what they said was, all right, we're going to do something else, but we're not going to sell drugs. We're not going to keep doing this stuff that we, uh, you know, is, is, is a destructive alternative. Like we need to do something else. Hmm. And off the back of the parties, when you had a party, people start dancing and stuff, right? And after a while, somebody at that party does a move or something. And it's like, oh, what move was that? And it, oh, man, that was the, whatever, whatever move or whatever, you know? So then people started, the, the style of music, they were finding breaks in James Brown records and Apache from the bongo band yeah. and, and playing these for hours. These were the only records they would play because it had those breaks in there. So then after a while, these guys are looking, looking for these records. So now you're getting a style of dance. And now all these guys in the early seventies looked up to Bruce Lee. They looked up to that discipline. They looked up, guys were walking around the hood dressed up like Bruce Lee. This is not me telling you, this is KRS and everybody else at the time, both in, in New York and in, in LA saying this, like guys in the hood were looking at Bruce Lee and he had the black guy with him, Jim Kelly. And it was like, oh man, this dude is fighting against the police doing all this Kung Fu stuff. So guys, that's where Wu-Tang got it from. They were going down watching movies and stuff. And so this, this, this type of, these, these type of things gave, the culture, the, the early seeds. And then as that happened, so, okay, it's okay. Now we got a dance style. Okay. Now we got the MC and style thing going. Oh, we got these, man, these guys are making these beautiful murals overnight in the train yards in New York, you know, and they're, and, and they're flying by during the daytime and they're like, yo, that's me up there, man. That's, that's, yep. that's my piece right there. <laughs> and, and you have, and then you had the beatboxing when they didn't have their own beats or they, you know, oh man, where's the DJ at? We don't need a DJ. <laughs> right. I, that's what I was talking yeah, about with lack of instruments, in, right? That that was yeah. that was a factor, right? Yeah, but but you know what? A lot of people in hip hop as well were instruments. They were musicians. Yeah, yeah. They get work. They couldn't get jobs, so they just transitioned to did something different. Those became the, like, the the music programs are programs out of the schools yeah. at that time, especially well, in the black with, Latino. Just to wrap this, just to tie all of this in, Bambada's Bambada's great gift was bringing people together from his organizing in the streets, you know, as a, as, a, as a gangster, a gang member, he used that to say, yo, we're gonna organize and stop doing this violent stuff. We're gonna come together. Thousands of you from the New York area. This is unheard of, like hmm. epic. And- The mothership. Positive things around these elements of hip hop. And then they said, we're gonna call it hip hop because Love Bug Star Ski's already given it a name. He's already, you know what? Mm -hmm. Let's add on. MC Cowboy, MC Cowboy. MC, Cow <laughs> MC Cowboy, and also, you know, um, people, when we start getting into the particulars of who was the first rapper and all of that stuff, we'll argue about shout, that. Shout out to yeah. Coco Rock while we're yeah. on the top. Shout out to Coco Rock. Rock. He is the one that, MC. He's is the one Sugar that Hill Gang, that. isn't that the correct answer? That, but, or, you know, or no. I, I know somebody in Coco Rock's hood is probably like, yo, I rap before him. So <laughs> what about <laughs> Curtis Blow? Those things, but. Curtis Blow, I just, shout out to Curtis Blow. He is a great example of the history of hip hop. He, as well as Karis, one that Hydra was mentioning, took it into a spiritual direction. You can see, I said, depending on how deep you want to get into these elements, you can go from rapping to emceeing to hip hop culture, all the way into how this affects world culture. Why did this get pervasive in every element of society yeah. for wasn't years later instead of a trend? I said and all of that to say spiritual this. thing. And, and Curtis Blow started a hip hop church and KRS started the temple of hip hop. And Curtis Blow, has died three times and come back to life. I have a podcast interviewing him and he's just talking about, yeah, I had a stroke and the doctor said this and that. And as I'm interviewing him, I'm like, wait, so you were dead for wow. five seconds and you came That's back crazy. to life. He's like, yeah. And this dude is a spiritual. So depending on how deep you want to yeah. get, like, Curtis Blow is definitely a great example to, to bring up in terms of like the deeper 
aspects, but he also had to be a pop star with hip hop. He's the one yeah. that Nas and Lauren Hill sampled in If I Rule the World. You mentioned Sugar Hill Gang. And, and for them being the originals, they were definitely not the originators, but they were one of the first biggest commercial hits. And a lot of hip hop today wouldn't be what it was if Sylvia Robinson didn't go and recruit Big Bang Hank and Wonder Mike to do Sugar Hill. But yeah. the cats in the hood that was emceeing at first was like, hell no, we don't want to do this. And Hank was like, yo, he, sh- he hollered at this man, Kaz, who Sugar Hill Gang, we've Casanova. Gang. And, say again? Casanova. Casanova. And we, yeah. we've spoken to both of them and they've come to Hartford and rock with us. But to be clear, it, and rest in peace, Hank, by the way, he passed away recently. Um, uh, so many, so many people from that era are passing away right now. So this is yeah. why we're really glad to be learning as much and passing on. I was going to say, much. we got to keep this history alive. And I'm glad yes, we're talking to you yes. guys. I got a question but, but for just you. To, but to make that point, yeah. as Hank said, hey, could I borrow your rhyme book? So Kaz was like, oh, uh, he, gave, he gave Hank his rhyme book. Next thing you know, hip hop, the hippie to the hip, it's the biggest it ever. Kaz had no idea. And later on, it was a point of contention. I so bet. that's why when you ask that question, is the real answer Sugar Hill Gang? Yeah. It's like, that definitely is a complex answer because yeah. now that you get the history straight, shout out to Hank, rest in peace. Shout out to Sylvie Robinson, everyone that made it a big record. But you got to give uh, props to, like Hydro was saying, Casanova of Cold Crush Brothers, Tony Tone, a lot of the cats that wasn't Mark Wiz. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're all Cold Crush Brothers' sons. Yeah, I think they a lot of us. Uh, yeah, we're, we're all their children. We're, we're the children of the Cold Crush, man. Yeah, no, that's like, cool. Seeing all those guys, like... Everybody. Y'all remember when Jay-Z said, I'm overcharging people for what they did to the Cold Crush? Mm, Remember Jay Z had that line. Yeah. That's what he was talking about. He was talking yeah, about how like Kaz, us. it was yeah. his rhyme book that got used in the Sugar Hill Gang, and they yeah. got so Jay Z said, "Well, now I'm a, I'm gonna take this big, so maybe that helped inspire him." But at the same point, I don't know how much Jay is like funding the Cold Crush or paid up, but I think in some <laughs> yeah. ways, cultural capital, he's definitely giving them their recognition, and that yeah. is a lot more okay. valuable than people think. I think, uh, okay, so for my official, you know, music trivia uh, question, I guess it's Sugar Hill Gang, but with most forms of art, they usually found it somewhere else and they led to this, but they were the first, I guess, to go mainstream or had the first big hit or whatever. But let me ask you, uh, let me ask you. Shout about out this. to so, Fresh Prince, Will Smith, too. He's getting a lot of heat right now, but I think he was the first to get a Grammy in hip hop, right? Will Smith and Jazzy Jeff. Are you saying he's been overlooked? Run DMC, did, Run DMC didn't have one before him? But maybe, I, I don't know. Are I'm you telling sure. me? Will I know Smith? they did with Aerosmith. They they had a hit with Aerosmith, right? Well, with yeah, the, but even, but even before yeah. that, when you when you go back to their first album with Rockbox, uh, I, I'm sh- are we sure that he didn't have they didn't have a Grammy for the, for that. Let me let me let me do my research on that. Because yeah. I know that was I know that was the first time they put it on like MTV and a lot of the video yeah. scenes, right? Yeah. yeah. I the hope Will Smith's not that being overlooked. One, that would be a real slap in the face. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 is, is going into the realm of battle rapping, Hydro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gentlemen, here's a question for you. I heard a, an interview, a quote. I don't know if this was recently or years ago, but it was with 50 Cent. And he was talking about, and I'm paraphrasing him here, but he basically said that you know, hip hop rap is absolutely a commodity of the black community. It's like, you know, we, we started it, we own it. But if you tell me that Eminem is not one of the best rappers out there, I'll tell you that you're just being disingenuous. So what do you think about that? That this did, as we've been talking about, start in the African-American community. But as you mentioned, it's, it's expanded beyond that. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? What do you, what do you think about someone like Eminem? I, I, me, me personally, Eminem is one of the greatest people to ever pick up a pen and start writing rhymes and reciting rhymes, rapping, battle rapping. He's been an inspiration to me. Um, Eminem um, is definitely someone that has, when he, when he made his mark and was coming up, um, he was beloved in the hood. And I remember someone in the hood, this will paraphrase my answer and give you a bigger overview I remember someone saying something like, yo, you heard that new Eminem? And somebody was like, who that white dude? And one of the gangsters in my hood was like, 
Yo, you bugging. You 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 hating right now. Yeah. Home home correct. Home tough. And Eminem opened doors for people to be different, for people to be able to express themselves because even though he is a white MC who doesn't shy away from being white, who doesn't shy away from the fact that he has been privileged at times from being white. But what he did do was walk through that door and pull other people through that door that mm. weren't white. Yeah. And also made it to where other MCs that are different in the way that they express themselves. That's all we care about in hip hop. Are you dope? Nice. I don't care what you look like. I don't care what you dress like. Nice. Are you dope? Because the weirdest person in hip hop will create their own style, their own fashion and stuff. So to answer your question, yes, Eminem is dope. I'm happy that he's here. Um, the, the bad thing is when you get one dope MC, you get a bunch of clones. But yeah. that happens. <laughs> Every dope MC gets a bunch of clones. But and I, I mentioned, y'all might have heard me say the term the cipher early on. Everything yeah. in hip hop is done in ciphers, either a physical circle where people take turns or in a cyclical nature, like in terms of a graffiti wall, where it's not a, a circle of brick walls and buildings, but there's a cyclical nature in which the protocol allows one artist to go up and then the artist that follows them has to meet or exceed in some way. Meaning they either have to go higher on the wall, they have to add more colors, they have to do something that's more dangerous. You can't just scratch somebody out. And that's, again, the difference between people talking about just graffiti and hip hop writing graffiti, right? So again, I'm not gonna go all into the details, that's probably for a deeper research, but just repeating redundantly to tell you, like there's protocols that make something hip hop culture versus what you just see on the outside. And um, with, with, you're talking about two things when you talk about Eminem. One is, you know, taking a culture and then bringing people who weren't originally part of it as it grows and expands across the world and across time and generations. And the other is you're talking about just race and class in the beginning, okay? So just briefly, I want to say that there were white people involved in hip hop from the beginning, from what I understand. Because when these cats was, um, you know, hopping trains and doing graffiti late at night and, uh, and, 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 um, and there was white flight from the South Bronx and stuff like that. You always had people like uh, the BC boys and numerous producers who I won't get into, but who are at these jams. Uh, you had MCs like MC Search was one who would come in. And the thing was, he would come to a place where predominantly black and poor people were. And it was like Hydro said, oh, you showed and proved. It's not just like, oh, I rap really good. It's like, damn, you came to a neighborhood where people say, you're not allowed to go there, Mr. Search. Don't go there. Those black people are not nice and they sell drugs. So you always had, you know, people who would come to the hood and say, look, we're human. I got love for y'all. If y'all got love for me, let's rock together. And that's part of what hip hop is that they don't even really touch on. Um, there was a show on Netflix called um, uh, uh, Pass the Mic. It was like episode four, season four or something like that um, of this of this Netflix series on hip hop, but it's called Pass the Mic. And he talked about this cypher and how everyone could get into it. I don't steal this from me till I write my book, but I have a term <laughs> which I call rotational exclusivity, which is what Hydro says. I'm in the jacking cypher, it. I'm in the jacking cypher, it. <laughs> if you're nice, like shout out to my homegirl Invincible from Detroit, Michigan. She's a white lesbian MC. She's crazy. And she destroyed the cypher, meaning she raps really well as well as anybody else. And when she's there, everybody is pushing the white lesbian agenda for her 45 seconds. And then she passes on and the misogynistic dude from somewhere else comes on. Everybody's cool with the misogynistic dude because in hip hop, it's not really about that agenda. It's about the unity. Again, the principles are peace, love, unity, and having fun. Once you create that unity and that cipher, then we know we can communicate to each other, okay? Yeah. So that, that's what I want to say. Like, there was there was Black, Latino, there was white people, there's Asian people. Shout out to all the Filipino DJs and B-boys. Like, from the beginning, there was a lot of them, but they had to be willing to consider Black and Latino people as human, which was going against every bit of propaganda you had if you were not Black and Latino at that time. Yeah. But real quick, to get back to Eminem, Eminem 
was not the first white person and won't be the last person in hip hop. When we talk about Eminem, like my brother Hydro talked about, we're talking about something else besides being included. If you always had white people being included from the beginning, what's particular about Eminem is his level of excellence in MCing and his level of bravery in going to black and Latino and lower class neighborhoods and treating people as human. Mm. The things that we don't talk about when we're talking about is a white rapper okay, it always hurts me and it hurts a lot of uh, black and Latino marginalized people because it's always, it's like Black Lives Matter. It's this undiscovered conversation that people don't want to talk about, which is we're not talking about Eminem because he's just in rap. He's ridiculously nice. He's one of the best people to ever touch the mic. To this day, he's still, people can't mess with him. But we're talking about him because you get the sense that he loves people who are black, Latino, Asian. He loves all people and he respects that black people came up with this in conditions that it wasn't polite to come up with. And don't get it twisted. The reason hip hop culture has lasted 50 years is because it gave people who were told they were the bottom of society, right? It gave them a means by which to be looked as the coolest thing ever where all these commercial brands wanna use hip hop in their ads. And he doesn't just take that last part and go, yeah, hip hop's cool now, I rap really good. He goes, he's always giving props to the fact that it was created by people who we look down on. And that is the difference between rap and MC. As an MC, as a breaker, as a DJ in hip hop culture, you have to point out that your number one responsibility is to point out that those who seem to be have nots have value. Hmm. that is equal or greater to anything that, than you would think they would have. Yeah, so right shout on. out to Eminem for that part. And he's nice as an MC, but that's not all it's about. We're talking with a uh, rap poet and uh, hydro our in-house hip hop experts. Uh, Nick Bruce. Yeah. I got one last question, but do you, uh, you, you got any thoughts for the, uh, the gentleman here? Uh, am I, uh, I'm, I'm fascinated. I mean, I could listen to it for a long time. I took some notes down. I'm going to watch some more stuff. I hope we could talk again sometime, uh, as I watch more of the stuff that you've mentioned, I, I made some notes and stuff like that. Like, I'm just fascinated with it all. Like, it, I didn't know it was so complex. I mean, I, I knew a little bit of it, but there's a lot of complexities to this whole art form, uh, the inclusivity of it all. And the respect of it all, I love. So, yeah, I appreciate you guys being on today. And, yeah, like I said, I'm fascinated by it. Yeah. Well, I was, any- yeah, I was telling the guys before the show started, there's a great documentary that you can find on YouTube from VH1 called New York 77, The Coolest Year in Hell. And there is a, a law. I mean, they talk to Bambada. They talk to KRS1. They talk to Kaz, DJ Wiz. They, I mean, they talk to everybody in, in there. And that's that's part of like the whole year of New York in 77, which touches upon the city being bankrupt and the kid and, their, and money, no money for schools and no police and that sort of thing. So if you guys get a chance, check out that documentary if you haven't, because I think you guys will really dig it. Nice. Yeah. We all have drop, a good the name inside, drop the name in the chat so I can see. Or, you got it. Yeah, right on. So here's my uh, my final question for you guys. I just saw this news story. I think it was this morning, and it just uh, I I can't tell if it's a good thing or a bad thing. You know, we're talking about the fact that hip hop originated in the African American community, but it's expanded beyond that in all sorts of ways. So the U.S. Army. I don't know if you guys heard the story or not, but a U.S. Army marching band put out an ad looking for rappers to add to the U S marching band and two guys signed up for the army so that they could take this opportunity. And now they're featured performers in this military marching band. So is that, is that part of the evolution of all of this? Or is that weird that the army is sort of co-opting hip hop and rap? I think it's weird. <laughs> but, <laughs> you, know, um, you know, the army doesn't, you know, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to do it. They're going to recruit, man. They're going to get them. <laughs> I've seen recruiters in the wildest places, man. So, you know, um, the organizations are going to get who they're going to get, you know, so hip hop is going to get who they're going to get. The army is going to get who they're going to get. The radio industry will get who they get. So, Everybody has to walk their own path. Um, I think it's, I, I didn't, I didn't, I never heard of that. So it's pretty interesting, but it, yeah, it's a brand uh, new news story. So check it out. Yeah. But yeah. I'm, I'm it sure there's been soldiers. On, once I, it, one thing I will say is that that um, doesn't surprise me because hip hop 
has become a worldwide thing. And yeah. just to tie it back from earlier, it, it's not accidental or coincidental. Um, you know, Bambada and those guys in the Zulu Nation took that uh, Planet Rock on a tour around the world and set up um, set up chapters of the Zulu Nation around the world. So all of this hip hop that you see in Africa and Europe around the planet um, is not by coincidence. It was it was supposed to be that way. And if you study history, right. if you study some of the early civilizations, man, like some of those hieroglyphs look like graffiti. You know, some of mm -hmm. those some of those depictions that we see in some of these ancient civilizations and some of the practices and cultures that they had look very hip hop ish to me. You know, uh, I've even heard of stuff being found in and you know, in, in Greenland and Iceland, where those guys were like practicing a form of like almost like battle rapping. They were like reading stuff that they wrote to like slander each other and like, but in jest, in a very, in a very literal, uh, in a very artistic manner. So, you know, this is just hip hop now, but it's always been here. You know, because mm -hmm. um, you know, as my as the brother KRS once said. It's, hip hop is a very natural thing. We've just attached this name to it. But all the stuff that we do in hip hop and all the four elements is just a movement of life, right? From the break dancing to the graph to the actual chanting and spitting lyrics to, you know, the actual beats. You know, we've been hip hopping since we was inside the womb hearing that, that beat. Yeah. So, yeah, there you go. That's yeah. deep. Rap poet, what do you think? The uh, rappers yeah. in an army band. What's your I, I two agree. cents? I agree. And I'm absolutely 100% sure there have been MCs and B-boys and B-girls in the army for decades, ever yeah. since the 70s and 80s, because some of the people on the front lines in the armies are people who come out of impoverished neighborhoods, right? Mm -hmm. Where yes. again, hip hop was not just, it is this collective unconscious thing, but in particular, it's something that literally makes people feel valuable in our capitalist society. Look not just doing when they're in the army. They're marching and chanting. And, and not just a coping mechanism. Like that's <laughs> you guys gotta understand why did they said hip hop was being a trend and it's about to be 50 next year. What I keep stressing is there's this special thing about it, which is that it wasn't just up till now, even to this day, a lot of people have coping mechanisms and paradigms of psychology for dealing with stress and PTSD and so forth. But not many people have come up with a paradigm like hip hop does, where you're not just coping, you actually feel like the most valuable living in the moment, living your purpose, excelling on this planet version of you. That's what hip hop does. When you're in a cypher, when you're dancing, when you're rapping, when you're doing graffiti, it makes you feel like, oh, damn, I'm, I'm in the projects and I'm less, but I'm getting by. No, it makes you feel like, damn. And that's why other people have wanted to come to the projects and to dangerous neighborhoods and to poor places to get a stamp of approval from hip hop artists, right? So we know that a lot of people who join the military are looking for a way to get their college uh, paid for and make money and don't have a lot of options and they go to the military. So duh, of course, a lot of them, a lot of people in the military are familiar with hip hop and probably got some nasty MCs yeah. and all that. Yeah. Now, the matter of officially the army recognizing hip hop in that way <laughs> is like anything else. It's good and bad. It just it just <laughs> raises the stakes, right? On one hand, you could just have somebody who's whacking it like, yeah, I'm hip hop, I'm rapping. I don't know if they said hip hop or rap, but we already established the, yeah, the, yeah. the spectrum of that. Yeah. But if they're claiming hip hop, we know that hip hop principles, like I said, peace, love, unity, and safely having fun, right? Well, when you ask people outside of this conversation with hip hop is, what do they say? Sex, drugs, violence, and money. Exorbitant, yeah. wasteful money, right? Yeah. In hip hop, we draw an arrow from sex to love, from violence to peace. From each of these sex, drugs, violence, and money, we draw a one-way arrow to peace, love, unity, and fun, because we're trying to decriminalize youth and people who are caught up in these things that are, they're just into sex they're in drugs they're in the, we know that there's a human urge that is universal peace love unity and fun but not everybody sees access strategies right so when you look at breaking mc and djing writing 
Um, like Hydro said, beatboxing. We also have knowledge educating, which we're doing with each other right now. People also include street fashion, right? You see the fashion in hip hop. Uh, some have even gone up to a 10th element, health and wellness, how far you want to take it. But it all has this thing in common of, are you showing people that, that in, you have an inner value that is more important? And the, our US military at least spends way more money every year on tools of war than they do on tools of education. But what is the justification? We're trying to create what? Peace, right? We need these weapons and these tools for war for peace. Well, what hip hop does is we create these ciphers where you don't just say, uh, everybody be nice to each other. No, the b-boys and b-girls, they flipping each other off. They getting each other's space. The rappers are doing this. And outside it looks like, oh, this is so terrible. But no, in boxing, in basketball, and football, what do you do when someone comes to scoring your point? You block their way. You try to steal the ball from them. You try to hit them. And emceeing and dancing and hip-hop culture, you let them do whatever they want to do while it's their turn. It teaches you to let people express and not criminalize them for being angry, for being sad, for wanting to be competitive. And then when it's your turn, you respond and you get in their face and you do whatever they want. And at the end, you piece it up, which is why hip hop is one of the mm -hmm. best paradigms for nonviolent response to impression which yeah. again is a whole other radio show and a whole other lecture. <laughs> but if the military can tap into what hip hop really does, how it decriminalizes people, how it finds commonality between white, black, and everybody since the beginning in these ciphers, and how it says, look, we see that sex is an expression towards love. You want connection. We see that money is an expression towards value. If there's other ways to be valued, everyone doesn't need to be so money hungry about the price per se. Yeah. Right. If the, if the military can get into that, then go ahead. Yeah. Let's, let's <laughs> more These are some deep pop. thoughts. I, I like we what you say. We just have uh, more rap battles and less. Can you imagine? Right. That'd be a good yeah. thing. I Wouldn't that see, be a I fun way? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Vladimir, Vladimir Putin and Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> that's where we're going. That's, that's, that's all right. where we're going. I'm going to try to get you guys in the UN so we can uh, propose all of this stuff. So, all and right. Hip hop I, has been to the UN. There is a declaration of, of hip hop in the UN. And shout out to Minister Serving KRS One. You could find that online. Nice. Right on. Uh, speaking Tony of online, Blackman, let me not leave out my sister, Tony Blackman. Google Tony Blackman, Google Minister Server. Google the hip hop declaration of peace. Right on. And how can people find you guys? Uh, Instagram, websites, anything if they want to know more about either of you. Uh, we are we are a rap group. We were part of a rap collective. We recently um, connected, but we have individual um, individual ways to uh, find us. I am at Hydro H Y D R O the number eight S I X T Y Hydro eight sixty. That's on all social media platforms. And uh, I'm also part of a four man rap band. So much, you know, M Eminem, Eminem and, uh, influenced me to get my own rap band. Yeah. Hey, nice. So I have the backpack. You can find us making, uh, you know, spreading peace, love, unity and safety, having fun. One boom bap rap at a time. And that is the backpack. T-H-E-B-A-P-P-A-C-K on all social media platforms. Album be ready on it on the way nice mm -hmm. super cool rap that, poet how that. do we find you just simply r a poet one p r a p o e t that's twitter that's instagram and i think facebook is the rap poet like how you have the backpack yeah but yeah yeah Very i'm out cool. here and 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 uh i gotta bounce to this show tonight but it's been really an honor and i really appreciate the diligence that y'all have spent um brewski i could tell you did a lot of research um <laughs> what we call primary research, you know? You can't, sure. you can't just talk about hip hop, as you know, Bruski, like, I, and I heard what you said, you kind of, a lot of a lot of people talk about um, objective research, that's not real. There's a lot of racial and class issues that come together with unrecognized prejudice. So when you jump in a cypher and you engage in honest discussion like y'all gentlemen have today, that's a hip hop conversation. We demonstrated that element of, of knowledge and hip hop. And um, I just want to say it was an honor to be here and, and I'll be glad to connect with y'all in the future. 
Absolutely. Right it was an honor to have you guys. I love having an open conversation like this. I hope, uh, I hope some people learn some things. So uh, yeah, let's keep it going. Next time, uh, next time we have an issue like this, I'd be happy to reach back out to you guys. Yeah. It's getting cold out here in Connecticut too, man. So yeah. I might have to come see you in the studio. Send some tickets, yo. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm, I'm up in Boston. So I, I know what you're talking about. With the weather. Okay. Oh, okay. Be in, oh okay. listen, again, uh, shout out, shout out um, Boston. I'll be in Boston um starting october 5th to do some teaching Word. at the uh frederick g uh pilot middle school uh with pendulum inc that's mickey fax the great legendary mickey fax grammy award winner mm -hmm. for his pen on kanye west's uh masterpiece donda and the great battle rap <laughs> uh legend chilla jones from boston uh, Chilla Jones and Mickey Fax have created a school for lyricism. I am a 41 year old student of the game. So I wanted to step my pen up even further than where it is now. And uh, now I will be teaching these um, techniques and hip hop uh, writing to youth in the Boston area. So I'm very excited. Nice. Ruski, I'll connect with you, man, so we can get together <laughs> while I'm here. Sounds awesome. Thanks for doing that. Appreciate it. All right, gentlemen. Yeah, gentlemen we appreciate thank you so it. much. Yeah, appreciate you all very much. Appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. I'm sure we'll talk again soon. Yes, Absolutely. yes, indeed. Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, we'll we'll right. stay connected via uh, email and all that stuff. But yeah. definitely love this, man. Um, you know, it's very special when people bring you into their platform, bring you into their cipher. Thank you for bringing me and Rap Poet into your cipher. And, and in turn, we brought you into our cipher. And now you know, we'll keep that going because, you know, there you go. the circle doesn't stop it doesn't have a beginning or an ending so we'll, we'll yeah keep the conversation. there you go round and round we go all right well, i super well, appreciate well, it we're at poet take it easy we will all chat another time and uh yeah all right well, there you go what, what a conversation we... dude that was quite a conversation I'm, you know, uh... i mean i think it went a lot deeper than you were thinking it was going to yeah yeah for sure yeah that was uh questions from crosby that's my 12 year old son that just sparked that hour long chat about culture and hip hop and <laughs> racial tensions and issues and everything else. So yeah, there you go. I, and, uh, uh, I love the, uh, you know, I love the vibe of the whole conversation. Oh. I mean, I was, uh, uh, only wondering, Oh, when, uh, their cameras popped on, I was like, Oh, what are they thinking? We're going to be actually talking about here. And they see the three of us and they want to have the conversation conversation and right off the bat they made the comment of like hey these are the conversations that we need to be having i appreciate that dude i thought I, I was compelled by everything that was happening in that i was a little bit lost in it i agree mm. in a good way and yeah yeah you know, for sure it, it can be a little awkward for a couple of white dudes to try to have a conversation about hip-hop culture and why it started with you know the black community and all that and shouldn't uh, be well, it, that's my point, though. Like, this is why we do it, so that we can put this kind yeah. of stuff out here and destigmatize it and show that, you know, we're all humans, man. Like, let's talk music and uh, all that stuff. So that's cool. And, Brewski, I didn't know what a hip-hop expert you were. You got a few shout-outs there. You feeling good about that? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, yeah, it's it's cool. It's, it, I mean, I, I wasn't trying to, like, show off or anything like that. It's just it's no. something that – well, it's something that that – that I've always been into, uh, but not just on the music side of things, but but also kind of from a history standpoint, where the country was in the early 70s when he was talking about New York City not having any money and that sort of thing. And then you also had, you know, the non-veterans coming back hooked on heroin. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, yeah. and it was just so many things that that brought that brought uh, brought about what he was talking about yeah. with hip hop history um that i didn't want to just start jumping into the history stuff so i just kept it no, surface you, level on the hip-hop things you chimed in enough to sound intelligent on the topic so that was good <laughs> and hey it turns out my original answer was actually not too bad i, I got no, it pretty close no. right? yeah, yeah it was fairly close dude i think you can feel pretty good about that are you going to show that interview to crosby yeah we didn't discuss my sex life at all so i'll, I'll show it to my son <laughs> well, yeah that's what i was and, thinking and you know by the way on your point steve about your answer there's a song by a, a hip hop artist called Freeway, called African Drums, that uh -huh. you might. Get, it's it's actually. I mean, the song itself is just amazing. Um, but it, he talks about drums in Africa and and all that yeah. sort of thing. See, so it makes you, me you, nervous whenever I start bringing up like 
tribes as I'm talking about. <laughs> like, sure. am I stepping in some, but no, but I think there's, I think it's genuine that every culture, no matter how isolated it is, forms some sort of music. And the most primitive is a basic drum beat and some sort of not singing, not talking somewhere in between. So made sense to me. I don't know. Allow me to play for you the music of my people. That's just a phrase that, oh, that I thought everyone... you were about to rap. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> no, no, no. But 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 that's 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 just a way to to start a conversation that yeah. to share music with other people that maybe they they've never heard before. Yeah. Nope. Hey, I dude. Agree. When I...